Hey folks, welcome to another episode of this Tool Talk series. The whole point of this series is to build up a library of information pertaining to my particular tools. That way I can point people in that particular direction uh, for the questions uh, they may have on my tools, which seems to be quite often. So this particular video is going to be on this rigid 12-inch sliding dual bevel compound laser miter saw. Uh, it, it was orange. I spray painted it black, so I know I'll get that question probably. Uh, I spray painted all this black and just haven't spray painted this. So I'm not going to go on into all of these specifics. Basically what I like, what I don't like, and would I buy it again? What I do like about it is it's a 12 inch saw blade. So I do get a little bit more depth of cut. When I made my uh, workbench, I had three slabs that were going to be glued together to make the top section of the workbench. Each one of those slabs was four and three eighths of an inch thick and eight inches wide. And this saw was able to trim up each end of those slabs in one pass, which is, is nice. It's very convenient. Not 100% necessary, but it was very convenient being able to trim them all nice and smooth in one particular cut. Um, so this, this 12 inch blade gives you a little bit more depth of cut than a 10 inch blade. And I don't know on other models how much room you have front to back to make a cut. This one I have uh, 13 and a half inches from the fence to the furthest point of the blade on the table. So technically speaking, I can make a, was it 27 inch cut, 27 inch wide cut by making one pass, flipping the board and then making another pass. I've done it previously a couple times, but I would always prefer to use the table saw in those situations. Um, so something else that I really, really like about this, this is really nice is the the angle adjustment is so smooth and so fluid and so easy. It's, it's probably the best one that I've ever used personally. It's very quick to lock it in place, unlock it, move it where you need to be. And it's got some uh, preset stops, like this one's zero degrees, or you can lock it wherever you want. You know, it's, it's very convenient. And also it's repeatable. So once I have the fence dialed into 90 degrees off the blade, moving it around and bringing it back, will bring it back to 90 degrees. I'm, I'm very satisfied with that. Things that I don't like about this saw, uh, the very first one I want to mention, which is a huge bummer, is these fence extensions, whatever you want to call them, auxiliary fences or fence extensions. The one on this side uh, is not parallel to the fence below it. So the way I found that out is I had the, the bottom part dialed into 90 degrees, perfect. Make, made a couple cuts on some materials, getting good results. And then on some thicker stock, I was getting less than 90 degree cuts or, or not accurate 90 degree cuts. And I finally figured out that this particular piece is not parallel to the fence below it. It's, I'm exaggerating here, but it's off on an angle. So anything that touches this or references off of this top surface was not being cut at 90 degrees. So I've removed them and all is well. Uh, I haven't really missed them since I've removed them, but it is kind of crappy that, uh, that the situation is what it is. So I don't know if that's just poor manufacturing on this particular piece or if it's on the fence down here. Uh, but I've talked to a couple people who have this same exact saw and they don't have that issue. So maybe it's specific to this one. Um, another thing I really dislike is this thing is massive. It's like a small car sitting in here, a small compact car. Uh, it, it's, it's really, it's just really, really, really huge from the fence to the wall is like 27 and some change. It's, it's quite a bit of space that you have to dedicate to the back side of the saw. Uh, and then also because this thing extends so far, when you do spin it, you have to take that into consideration for how much space you have available uh, around you. So I think from the left side to the right side of this little dust collection box that I have uh, is like 44 inches, something like that. It's, it's quite a bit of space. So if space is a concern for you, uh, this, this is a huge, huge saw. I don't really care for that. Um, I don't use lasers often on tools, like just for lining stuff up, but sometimes it is convenient on a miter saw to just turn the laser on and kind of see where you're at. This particular laser only engages when the saw blade is spinning. So there's no button up here that you can push to turn the laser on. You have to make the blade spin in order for the laser to turn on. Don't really care for that. Um, dust collection on every miter saw that I've ever used other than a miter saw that costs the exact same amount as my truck um, has been horrible. So this dust collection just, or this miter saw just sprays dust everywhere. I have it into a contained box 
basically. So I've got a four inch dust collection port in the back. When I turn the dust collector on and when I use the miter saw, dust still comes around it, but the vast majority of the heavy stuff just gets sprayed back. And then all of the fine stuff that you breathe in the air, there's a nice draft that pulls it back. So dust collection isn't awesome on this particular saw, but I do have it contained by, by the airflow around it. Um, there are a couple dust collection solutions on YouTube for this particular saw. I think the YouTube channel uh, Shop Built has this saw and just did some type of dust collection that seems to be working quite well for him. But out of the box, just having a bag in the back uh, that goes on this back port here is not great at all. Dust collection is horrible on this, on this saw. So would I buy this again if I had to rebuild my shop tomorrow? Uh, let me first say that I did not purchase this out of pocket. I worked for a third party company who also has a business relationship with Rigid and Ryobi. And that particular company offered to pay me with this tool rather than pay my bill. And I took them up on that offer because this was valued at a little bit more than what I would receive uh, in my bill, my payment. So I did not uh, receive it for free, but I did not pay for it out of my own pocket. Would I buy it again though if I had to rebuild my whole shop? The answer is no, I probably wouldn't. Now that being said, it's, it's here, it's working. I'm not, I don't have any plans on replacing it uh, unless it just dies. Um, I'm gonna keep it and it's, you know, it's working out just fine the way it is, but I would not buy it if I had to start over because I think I would be better off if I could possibly find an older model radial arm saw. I think that would fit my needs a little bit more than this. Um, and be a little bit more convenient to me. I don't, I don't use the sliding, the, the, the bevel feature at all. I, I would, for those particular cuts, I would probably use my table saw these days. Um, it's just crazy big. I don't really care for the amount of space. Like I said, it's, it's in this spot and it's not gonna change. It's just, it's just, it's just a huge, huge saw. And I think uh, if I could find a older radial arm saw and then a, just a cheap generic, um, powered 10 inch miter saw, that would be fine. I would much rather prefer that particular setup than this one going forward. So um, it, it hasn't failed me, I'll put it that way. So it, for whatever that's worth, it hasn't failed me and it's, and it's done everything that I've needed it to do. Like I said, I just wouldn't buy it going forward for those particular reasons. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I'm probably going to do the clamps next. So uh, stay tuned next week and I'll talk to you then. You guys take care and have a great day.